Hi everyone, my name's Katrina and today I'm going to be talking about the books that I read in September. It was a bit of a mixed bag in September. I read two five-star books and then the other one, I'm probably going to give it a 2.5. I'm very conflicted. Let's talk about this one first. We have City of Lies by Sam Hawke. This was the book of the month for September for The Name of the Book, which is a book club that I co-host. If you want more information, links and stuff in the description. Yeah, this one I had really high hopes for. I thought I was going to love it. And in the end, the main thing that I really enjoyed about this was the world in which it's set in. I don't think the way the world building was executed was necessarily perfect, but the actual world itself was super fascinating and in particular I love the way that society was structured and more specifically the family unit. I thought the way that families worked was really really interesting. In the end though that wasn't quite enough to make up for some of the other issues that I had. I for one didn't love the pacing and the fact that we did get a lot of info dumps. There's a lot of information that we're given about things that aren't always super relevant and then we're kept in the dark for a lot of other things which could have been unveiled earlier on in the book. Like it's a really big book and I think it would have benefited from being like 200 pages shorter. One of the things that really irritated me is when there's a character who knows something and are just about to say it and then a messenger runs in saying there's a crisis we are under attack and that thing is left a mystery which I thought was a bit of a cheap tactic didn't love it that really irritated me this book is also told in two different perspectives we have Joven and Kalina who are brother and sister and basically the family business their role is essentially to be a food taster for the Chancellor and being the older sibling Kalina was supposed to do that but she is frail she's like chronically ill we don't know exactly what it is but she wasn't physically well enough to poison taste and things like that so that fell into Joven. So Joven is training to become the next food taster his uncle is the current food taster for the current chancellor something happens there is a very mysterious poison that kills the chancellor and Joven's uncle and it's about the heir now taking up the position of chancellor and Joven and Kalina trying to figure out what happened, who was responsible, and why. I'm not going to go into too much more detail because honestly I could talk about this for a really long time, but I would have preferred if Joven wasn't in the picture. I would have loved this story probably solely from Kalina's point of view and especially if she'd taken on more of an active role towards the start of the book. Like I think that a lot of the first two thirds of the book the characters are really passive and then things actually start happening and they actually start doing things in the last third. So again, could have been a shorter book. Ultimately one of the most disappointing things I found with this book was that the antagonists motivations, like the responsible party, their motivations were not strong enough. Thinking about it now I'm leaning more towards a two star for this. I don't know. Very very conflicted because I think there was a lot of potential, I just don't think the execution was perfect. I just wish it had been kind of structured in a slightly different way and like more emphasis given to Kalina. Very very sad indeed. I wanted to love this one. Now we have the last two five star reads. First of all I have Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor, the sequel to Strange the Dreamer. You guys have been hearing me talk about this quite a lot I'm sure because I started reading this three to four months ago now. I was sent an arc of Muse of Nightmares from the wonderful wonderful Carrie a few months ago. Thank you you are an angel. I decided to start reading this to Red from Little Red Reader. We would hang out on FaceTime and I would read her Muse of Nightmares because she didn't have a copy of the book herself. And it did take us a little while to get through the book but it was such a great experience and obviously I ended up loving the book. I gave it five out of five stars. If you don't know anything about this series the first book is Strange the Dreamer. It is magical, whimsical, colourful, all of the wonderful things beautifully written. The first book follows a guy named Laszlo Strange who is a librarian and fascinated by this mythical city called Weep which has had no contact with the outside world for hundreds of years. If you want to know a little bit more of my thoughts on the series I have done a spoiler free series review so I will have that linked in the description below but what I will say about Muse of Nightmares is I thought it was a really satisfying conclusion. There are a lot of questions raised in book one and I think the way that they were answered in book two was just so well done. It was fast paced, a lot of action, the stakes, they're so high, things were really really intense and I think it really managed to pack in a lot of information but it didn't feel info dumpy or like really rushed so I think it was just a really really satisfying conclusion to a beautiful 
story. The last book that I'm going to be talking about today is Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. This is a reread, so I have read it before, as you guys know, and I did do a reading vlog. So if you would like to know a little bit more of my thoughts on how rereading Nevernight went for me, I did do a spoiler-free and a full spoilery discussion in that video, then I'll leave that in the description below as well. But ultimately, I once again gave Nevernight five out of five stars. Nevernight follows Mia Corvair, who, when she was younger, her father was hanged as a traitor, and she's made it her life goal, essentially, to kill the men responsible for her father's death. And in order to do this properly, she decides to join the Red Church, which is a cult-like school of assassins. It is honestly so wonderful. This book is something else. I will say, though, that a lot of people do struggle getting into the hang of the writing style. The first 100 pages or so is quite dense, the writing is very lyrical, a lot of metaphors going on. I did really enjoy it, but to be fair, the first 150 pages of the book I read really slowly and then I whizzed through the last part. So it is a little bit more effort to start the book. If you're struggling, I would urge you to push through, wait until you've reached the Red Church and read a few more chapters. If you're not loving it, then maybe the book isn't for you. But you might be pleasantly surprised. I honestly just love these characters so much. The world building is so intriguing. There's footnotes in this book as well, which I really, really enjoy. The narrator is so sarcastic and hilarious. There's a lot of witty banter. I'm so glad to get back into Nevernight. Really, really glad. In addition to the reading vlog, I do have a spoiler-free review of Nevernight, and Piera and I did a spoilery discussion live show for Nevernight. That being said, we also did do a live show for City of Lies. The first part is spoiler free, but we do quickly dive into spoilers. So that one is on Piera's channel. So don't forget to check out all of the review and discussion videos that I've linked in the description below if you're interested. But I think that's about all that I need to talk about today. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this reading wrap up. I will see you very soon in a new video, but until then, I will talk to you in the comments. Bye!